Great Oxygenation Event So 2.4 billion years ago, you were a carefree anaerobic organism. You didn't need any oxygen, which was great, because the world was a strict no O2 zone. The air was filled with several gases like methane, carbon dioxide, and water vapor, but there was no free oxygen at all. Until one day, a bacterium called cyanobacteria became the first organism in history to perform photosynthesis, which produced oxygen as a byproduct. And boy, did they produce a lot of oxygen. So much, in fact, that it became one of the most common gases on the planet, even replacing a lot of the methane. Now, this was a big problem for you and all the other anaerobic organisms living back then. Oxygen was highly toxic, which led you and many other species to become extinct. And by many, we mean that over 80% of all species on Earth were wiped out. This process lasted around 400 million years, and during this time, some organisms, including some of the cyanobacteria themselves, began to accept oxygen in their lives. Unlike your ex, oxygen eventually stopped being toxic. It just took a few hundred million years of gaslighting the atmosphere first. Late Ordovician Stepping out of your time machine, 445 million years into the past, you're greeted by a site that's truly... wet. Almost everything appears to be submerged in water, leading you to think, did someone leave the faucet running on the entire planet? In fact, you find yourself standing on a vast continent known as Gondwana, the world's largest landmass by a long shot. Well, except for your mom, of course. The ocean is filled with life, from the early marine animals called cephalopods, to the small, spineless critters known as trilobites, to even shellfish. Out of nowhere, you notice that the temperature has started to get colder a lot colder. The planet basically started to turn into an ice cube, or more accurately, an ice globe. Those that prefer a warmer climate can't handle this sudden change. As a result, about half of all species of sea creatures and 85% of all individual sea creatures also die out. One million years into the future, and things aren't getting any better. A second pulse of extinction takes place as the world starts to warm up again. It's as if Mother Nature just couldn't decide whether she wants the AC on or off. What's interesting is that, despite this huge loss of life, the overall structure of the world's ecosystems doesn't really change that much. Using your time machine, you fast forward through the next 5 million years in a blink. You see new species evolving, and the number of living creatures has started to bounce back. Basically, our planet just shrugged off the whole situation and moved on. Late Devonian Wanting to see what's going to happen next, you travel ahead to the Devonian period, where you find yourself in a world that's still almost entirely covered by water. The ocean is full of life, from the tiniest plankton to the mighty Dunkleosteus, which is a 32-foot-long fish with a face that would make a shark say, nope, not today, and paddle the other way. But then you get a sense of deja vu, as you notice that the waters around you start to get a lot colder once again. You notice the sea level beginning to drop and the beautiful reefs starting to fade. The trilobites and the small shellfish known as brachiopods begin to disappear. This time, the majority of them are never coming back. You can't help but wonder why this happened. Maybe a comet crashed into the waters while you were blinking. Or perhaps there was just too much volcanic activity in the ocean, killing all the sensitive creatures. Whatever it is, you're forced to watch as 70% of all known species meet their demise. And Capitanian. Sometimes you can trace an extinction event to one major reason. Other times, it's a big messy recipe for chaos. Tons of volcanic smoke, very little oxygen to breathe, high amounts of poisonous gases and acid rain. All of this and probably even more contributed to the dreaded Capitanian extinction event, which wiped out 35% of all living things on the planet. This event didn't discriminate, it eradicated whatever it could. In the ocean, it decimated corals, shellfish, and algae. On land, it devastated many plants and animals, including large reptiles called dinocephalians, aka the Terrible Heads. But a more fitting name would be the Terrible Headaches, because that's what this entire extinction event gave them. This event took around 3 million years to fully unfold, but eventually life began to rebound, with food chains returning to normal and new creatures filling the vacant niches, allowing life to regain the diversity it once had. Permian Triassic At this point in time, Earth was pretty much a massive circus, full of creatures that we couldn't fathom seeing today. There were gigantic insects, towering ferns, and incredibly strange looking fish. But to be fair, there are still weird fish in the ocean to this day. Looking at you, Mariana Trench Blobfish. 
Now every good circus must have a fire breather, and this is when the Siberian straps come into play, covering an area of at least 2.5 million square miles with a volume of around 1 million cubic miles, these volcanoes decided to spew out massive amounts of deadly gases like sulfur dioxide and carbon dioxide as if there was no tomorrow. Spoiler alert, for most species, there wasn't. This was the start of the Great Dying, widely considered the worst mass extinction our planet has ever experienced. This event wiped out 90% of all life. Even insects, usually unstoppable survivalists, couldn't dodge this one. In fact, the Great Dying was essentially one giant can of bug spray for them. After a few million years of this apocalyptic nightmare, the environment finally began to recover, and when it did, life returned with a vengeance. The seas saw the emergence of new groups, like the ancestors of the modern crabs and lobsters, as well as the first marine reptiles, which paved the way for the evolution of other marine reptiles like sea turtles and crocodiles. Olenekian and Aegean. Meet Eugene, a fish belonging to the Eugenia daunted Holocephalian species. One day, while Eugene was feeding on smaller sea creatures, he noticed something fishy. The water in his beloved ocean was starting to taste somewhat funky. Hmm, this tastes like lemonade that's been left out in the sun for too long, thought Eugene. This was a result of ocean acidification. This sour turn of events was due to an excess of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere. The ocean, being the good Samaritan it is, tried to help by absorbing some of it. But sadly, this act of kindness backfired, and the ocean became 25% more acidic than before, which was quite problematic for Eugene and all other water inhabitants. You see, Eugene and many other marine life forms built their shells and skeletons out of calcium carbonate, but the extra acid in the water was beginning to dissolve the calcium carbonate, making it hard for sea creatures to keep their shells and skeletons strong. This means they have to use more energy to build and repair their shells, leaving less energy for other important things like finding food or reproducing. The extra acid also affected Eugene's health. He had to use so much energy just to stay alive that he didn't have much left for anything else. He couldn't swim as fast or as far, which made it harder for him to escape from predators. Because of all these changes, many of Eugene's kind and many other sea creatures couldn't cope and eventually disappeared and never came back. Carnian Pluvial Nowadays, if it rained for a day or two straight, we're left quite astonished, and it's almost considered a major event. Now try to imagine a scenario where the rain didn't stop for two years, or even two million years. Well, that's exactly what took place during the Carnian Pluvial event. First, it's worth noting that before this episode, our planet was essentially a giant desert filled with sizzling sand. It was so hot, even camels would buy sunscreen if they could. But as it continued to rain for hundreds of thousands of years without any interruptions, new types of plants began to grow and new animals started to appear. Among these creatures were the first dinosaurs, which are the ancestors of the birds we see today. So next time you look at a chicken, know that you're looking at an actual dinosaur. However, when new species came in, some old ones had to go. This especially affected sea creatures. In fact, up to 33% of marine species vanished during this time. You might wonder how it would rain non-stop for 2 million years. While scientists aren't completely certain about how or why this happened, they generally believe it was due to a gigantic volcanic eruption, which triggered severe climate change, heating up the earth, and causing the prolonged rainfall. End Triassic Let's say you're a dinosaur living 200 million years ago. You're not the biggest or strongest animal on the planet, but your agility and speed are great survival tools. One day, the Earth starts shaking under your feet. The sky fills with volcanic ash, blocking the sunlight. All this points to a massive volcanic event coming up, specifically from the Central Atlantic Magmatic Province, or CAMP. Over the next 600,000 years, volcanic eruptions occur over four massive pulses. The volcanoes release vast amounts of carbon dioxide into the atmosphere, leading to global warming, or more like global toasting. On top of that, mercury is released in massive amounts, causing you to notice that no matter where you go, the water and the air have been severely contaminated. As the conditions worsen, you begin to see most of the species on the planet going extinct. Luckily, for some reason, the mercury doesn't poison you as much as other animals. Apparently, you're just built different. Fast forward 10 million years, and you notice ferns, ferns everywhere. Their takeover is a sign that the world is finally healing. 
As the world begins to recover, you and your fellow dinosaurs are living large. And we mean this literally, as many of you begin to grow to sizes that would make an elephant look like a chihuahua. And let's not forget those razor sharp teeth and claws that would make a bear jealous. You are now the king of the world. And you notice new species popping up too, like tiny mammals and marine reptiles. Cretaceous Paleogene for over a hundred million years, you as a dinosaur continued your dominance of the planet. You were simply OP. So to take you out, the universe resorted to forming a destructive tag team consisting of the Chicxulub asteroid and the Deccan Traps. The Deccan Traps, a magnificent volcanic region, began to release an absurd amount of carbon dioxide and sulfur dioxide each year. As these emissions continued non-stop for half a million years, they began to dangerously pile up in the atmosphere, leading to severe climate change. And then came the moment when the Deccan Traps started to spew massive amounts of lava. Clouds of ash darkened the sky as streams of magma started widespread wildfires, eradicating many local ecosystems and paving the way for the annihilation of your species. 300,000 years later, things got even worse, as you witnessed the Chicxulub asteroid coming down to demolish your home. The impact is unimaginable, stronger than billions of atomic bombs going off all at once. The ground trembles unstoppably beneath your feet, and the sky becomes even darker as a cloud of dust and debris fills the air. This leads to a nuclear winter effect, which is just a fancy way of saying that the planet was hidden from the sun for 15 years. As a result of those two disasters, the world is ravaged by tsunamis, earthquakes, and fires. One by one, you watch as your fellow dinosaurs succumb to the harsh conditions. The beloved flying reptiles, the pterosaurs also die off. Even many mammals, birds, and lizards are not spared. It's believed that this catastrophe led to the extinction of around 75% of all species on the planet. And sadly, you were part of that statistic. Pliocene Pleistocene. Let's assume you're the Earth. About 2.6 million years ago, you're in your Pleistocene era, feeling pretty warm and cozy. You're full of life, both on land and in the sea. On land, you're home to mammals like the saber-toothed cat and the woolly mammoth, while your oceans are inhabited by sea lions and even the most fearsome fish of all, the Megalodon. Suddenly, you notice a faint glow in the sky. You think to yourself, Eh, it's probably nothing. It's so far away, what could possibly go wrong? Oh, sweet, naive Earth. As it turns out, that nothing was a supernova 150 light years away, and it lit up your sky like a prehistoric 4th of July. After the supernova's grand fireworks display, a shower of cosmic rays composed of extremely fast particles called muons begins to fall, piercing deep into your surface. It's almost like a sudden downpour of tiny, invisible bullets coming from outer space. This cosmic deluge is believed to have caused a mass extinction of ocean animals at the time, including the Megalodon, and it led to more than a third of the species of animals living in your coastal waters to disappear. The reason those muons caused such havoc is that they likely increased mutations in all creatures that lived in your waters. It's as if all your marine life was being attacked by invisible ghosts that ended up causing them to develop cancer. And unfortunately, you didn't have chemo back then. 